Hey guys, uh, we're, we're about to pull up on a service call. It, it, I've been having an ongoing issue with SS2 float switches. Well, I want to rephrase that. I really don't think it's the SS2's fault because the SS2 does work good. And I love the Rector Seal float switches, the SS1 and SS2. But what I'm finding is, is that I'm getting calls from customers and it's mostly in the upflow position. They're calling me and they're telling me that they have water on the floor when I have an SS2 installed. So I don't know if the water is, how, let me, what I'm trying to say is, is I don't know if that these the way these drain pans are made if the water is not getting to the float switch quick enough to trip it before it starts to fall out of the pan i don't know but i do know that every time i test the switch the switch works so we're about to go in here and look at this one and if that's the case i'm going to move him to an ss1 in the primary line i know a lot of guys use those now i have several systems out there that have the SS1 in an upflow position and I don't have that issue because when the drain stops up, it trips the switch that's in the line. Like I said, I'm not sitting here knocking Rector Seal or the SS float switches. I absolutely love them. I am a huge believer in them. I think that the water is not getting into the SS2 quick enough on these applications to trip it before it starts to overflow. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start switching to the SS1 and install it in the drain line itself. So we're gonna go in here and take a look. All right guys, here's our application. Uh, we have a Arco Air gas furnace with a nice, a new ICP coil that I put in with a new ICP condenser. Um, you can see how much higher the secondary is compared to the primary. The SS2 is dry. It's completely dry. And you can see he's got buckets and pots under here catching the water. So I'm sure that this drain line is stopped up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to ins I'm going to blow it out or pump it out with the mighty pump. And I'm going to and I'm going to replace this T with an SS1 float switch. And eliminate this and put it and you know close the secondary off with a cap and uh go with an ss1 because what's happening is it's backing up and you can see the, the the difference i don't think it's getting to the ss2 quick enough so that's what we're gonna do all right guys i cut the drain line I had to use my, my hacksaw i left my pvc cutters at home but my PVC cutter is getting kind of wore out anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and pick me up a new set. I'm going to go to the supply house and get an SS1 because I don't have any SS1s on the truck. I have two SS2s on my truck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade them in. I'm going to, I'm going to exchange them for SS1s. I have the old SS2 out, and I'm going to make me a cap, a metal adapter with a piece of pipe and a cap. Cap that off. I blew the drain out with the Mighty Pump. And we're going to put an SS1 right there. And then if you look right here, I have the SS2 breaking red. I'll just do the same thing. I'll break red with the SS1. And uh, I think that's going to do a lot better. So we're going to go make a run to the supply house. All right, guys, I put some light on the subject for us. So here's the final product. The SS2 is gone. It's basically a male adapter with a cap glued in. I bought me a new pair of PVC cutters, retrimmed the PVC so it wasn't all hacked up. SS1 is now in line, wired in to red. They come with this little clean out, that way instead of having to cut the line, you can just pull the top off and then put this in there facing that way and then put this in there facing that way. So. You just hang it right there, let it sit right there, 
And now if the drain stops up, instead of the water having to back up all the way back here and then climb up into an SS2, all it has to do now, because I mean it's very rare that they that they back up, you know, they usually back up down the line. So it'll back up, back up, back up, and bam, it'll trip the switch right here instead of having to go all the way back. And it looks like, see, that's why I don't like that blue rain or shine glue. My subcon my ex-subcontractor put this unit in for me, put the coil in, I sent the condenser. And he used and he uses that rain or shine blue glue and my you could, I don't know if y'all saw that drip look that crap is not even holding watch I bet you I can pull it out yep look at that that's why I don't use rain or shine glue okay I'm gonna have to go get my my glue and uh and re-glue that I'm gonna uh let's see if I'm gonna have to yeah I'm gonna have to cut the tip off of it too all right let me go get my glue all right guys i pulled that rain or shine well not a let me rephrase that i pulled the old mail adapter out that had been glued with rain or shine i put a new mail adapter and as you can see i don't use rain or shine i use clear pvc cement and uh i trimmed back you can see where i trimmed the pipe that had the old rain or shine on there to make sure it would take good. All right, so I got that fixed up. He should be good to go. New float switch, new mail adapter. And uh, that that's why I don't use the rain or shine glue, guys, because that, it doesn't hold. I mean, unfortunately, you can see my sub used it here. He used it on this side of the 90, and he used it on this coupling. But all that seems to be holding just fine right now. All right, guys, just to re-elaborate on what we just did. So basically, we, uh, you know, we, we went from an SS2 to an SS1. Reason being is because on my installs, I've been having some issues with the customers saying they got water leaking on the floor. And a lot of times, most of the time, it's in an upflow position and uh, with an SS2 installed. Again, I'm not blaming the SS2 or Rector Seal, which is who makes them, because I, I love them, and they work fine. I just don't think, and it could just be my ICP equipment, because you could see the height difference between the primary and the secondary on that coil, and that was a gas application. The air handlers have a height difference too, but not as much as that one. So basically, I don't think the water was getting to the secondary SS2 fast enough to trip it before it would start leaking out of the pan. That's the only thing that I can conclude. So, I installed an SS1. That way it'll trip my, some of my competition right there. Um, that way it'll trip in the primary line instead of having to go back through that secondary. And that is going to be my new procedure for float switches from now on whether it be horizontal or upflow i'm going to start installing ss1s instead of ss2s and of course if it's horizontal there'll be a float switch uh your traditional float switch in the secondary pan like always but and if i have a trap which uh whether it be upflow or horizontal because if it's an air handler i'll have a trap i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is is i usually put a t with a with a riser and a cap to clean the trap well i'm gonna start hooking my ss1 to the trap and then i'll use the float device as my clean out which is good because it'll actually give me a bigger opening to clean it out anyway that way, if because we all know that when you got a P-trap, that 99% that of the time, that's where your drain clogs up is at the trap. So that way, when that trap clogs up, that water will back right up, straight up to that float switch instead of having to go back into the air handler and make its way to the SS2. It'll just trip right there, right away. 
So that's gonna be my new installation procedure for float switches. I just thought, it probably, I mean, I know it wasn't the best video, but, uh, but I thought it had some good information that you guys might wanna see. But anyway, all right guys, thank y'all for watching. That, that'll do it for this one. And we'll see you guys on the next one.